too. Hello, Fooper Troopers. This is your General Foopish Maximus. I am reporting for duty to lead you all into combat once again, my friends. Today is Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. We bring you an extra special episode. We were gone last week because it was 4th of July, so I'm back this Tuesday. We're doing two episodes this week. This Friday, we have the meme musician, Oliver Treon. Very excited to have him here with us. He's a character, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. But before that, we've got a lot to get to here today. First of all, I want to thank our sponsors, who are DoorDash and Captera. And let's just let's just get right into. Where's the sup here? Let's just get right into it. Um, so, man, I first of all, I want to just say, disclaimer, that uh, I am so exhausted from this baby. Nobody ever told me that having a baby was so tiring, okay? If I knew that, I would have still had him because he's the best, but he's a tough kid, man. He doesn't, his natural, he's a crier. He's a crier, and he's not, he doesn't sleep great, so you do the math on that. Sounds just like you. Right. Yeah, I know where he gets it from. <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's a complainer, all right. Oh, but, man, it's it's so hard. When you're sleeping in three-hour blocks, or like two- or three-hour blocks, you know, it's not a good sleep. It's almost like not sleeping, really. Um, that being said, Ela's not here. She's with Theodore. The earthquakes. How how did you guys enjoy getting rattled by those earthquakes? That was fun. Nice little ride. Biggest earthquake in 20 years here in L.A. Yeah, yeah. And it definitely felt like it. About 20 seconds in, I was pretty convinced that it was about to be like San Andreas. Right. Like the rock was going to be pulling me out of a crag. That's right. Yeah, yeah I, was, I, I had the same feeling where I was just kind of waiting and seeing like, how big is this going to get? Right. Well, it was bigger than the San Andreas. It was just further away. I meant the movie. Oh, the movie San Andreas. Yes. Yeah. Where we're just like falling into the pits of hell everywhere. Yeah, that that movie ruled, dude. Where there's like tsunamis coming into L.A. even though there's not a fault line in the ocean. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. So good. Ian, what, how, was, uh, how was your experience with the earthquake? Did you handle it okay? Uh, yeah, I was in a parking lot. I felt pretty good about that. Uh, oh, you were safe. You the, felt safe. I was ready for the earth to swallow me. I accepted it pretty quick. Were you guys scared, or were you like uh, just wrote it out? I mean, I've lived in LA my whole life, so I'm used to the earthquakes. But this one was scary. I mean, they don't usually last that long, like you said. I mean, it was about. I think I read it was like a little over forty seconds. That is a long time for an earthquake. Yeah, yeah it was a good rumble. Like you felt, it was Ela's first earthquake. She never been through it. Really? You know? She's from Israel. Those motherfuckers live on stone. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, the only natural natural disasters they get over there is uh, frogs raining down. And boils. <laughs> and boils like boil. and the ocean boiling and yeah. shit like that. And firstborns are dying. So they have a diff they have different kinds of natural disasters over there. Um But she I think I think she handled it very well. Theodore, on the other hand, just fell asleep. He liked the nice. he liked the earth vibrating. He just dozed right off. Shredder was freaked out though. Yeah. Yeah, our dog was flipping out too. Yeah, that's not a that's not <laughs> something you can easily explain to your animal. Well, Shredder, you see, uh, there's tectonic plates. But, yeah, it was, I felt like people were being a little melodramatic about it on, like, on Twitter. All the L.A.-based influencers. Influencers? <laughs> I imagine a lot of them aren't from here. So it was probably a lot of their first earthquake experience, right? Probably, you're right. I'm yeah. still traumatized from the big one when we were kids that one was terrifying and you know after i experienced this one i was like maybe i'm just remembering it as more intense now that i'm that now that i'm that since i was so young because this one was bigger and it was not really scary it was far away though it was far away but the one i remember as a kid in san andreas in northridge right Right, yeah. That one shook, shook violently. I mean, that one, yeah, that you, that one scared the shit out of me. You lived in Ventura at the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's close enough. You'll feel it. 
I was in West Hills, so um, I mean, it's only about 10, 15 minutes away from Northridge. Our house got fucked up. Was it damaged? Yeah, we had to move out. The foundation oh, wow. cracked, all kinds of Wow. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. But I remember that one shaking. It was a violent shake where this one was more of a kind of a tumble, a low tumble. Yeah. You know? Like you said, it was just kind of like a rocking. I can see why Theodore fell asleep. Yeah, he's like, peace, dude. I love <laughs> this shit. Anyway. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> what can you say, you know? Hey, welcome to California. They say in a mil- in a couple million years we'll be in the ocean. We'll finally secede from the United States. Hell yeah. We can have our liberal bastion. I wonder if you're just like, all right, well, we're, we, we've are we drifted into the ocean, so I guess we're just going to be our own country now? I mean, what are, you, what are they going to do about They're like, yeah, sure. Dude, that's great. I wonder if there's just like a big-ass earthquake and the ocean just charges in to a big crater. Like, when does that happen when it actually separates from the land? Fucking epic, dude. It happened in 1980. Really? What happened in 1980? Uh, Lex Luthor blew up a nuke on the San Andreas Fault. Thankfully, Superman flew around the planet in reverse time. Mm. Yeah. That's but, a, but yeah, that was rough. That's a movie, Dan. Hmm? That was a movie. I don't understand. Look at this. You ever seen this before? I, 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 you know that I'm in deep on the Instagram weird foods. This one freaked me the fuck out. What the fuck am I looking at? It's frog feet, bro. It's a whole frog <laughs> that's been, like, battered... <laughs> And cooked over an open flame. You believe that shit? I mean, I guess why not eat frogs, but my god. Everybody says it tastes like chicken, right? I guess everything tastes like chicken in the Matrix. I see. Okay. That was gross. What the fuck? Oh, so I've got so I've got some segments here. Obviously our main segment is Bell Thorn. Belle Thorne? Who's that? Don't tell me that's some porn star or something <laughs> weird that I just remember. Who is that? Belle Thorne is uh, Tana's friend, Okay, right? good. I was like, oh, did I just out myself <laughs> watching some weird, obscure porn? Well, <laughs> Belle Dolphin is weird, obscure porn, so... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I can't goof myself any deeper than that. Um, she responded. She hit me back. I got the DM, guys. Slid into the DM, huh? So I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. We've got... ASAP Rocky got locked up in prison in Sweden. We need justice. We're going to talk about that. We've got OJ Simpson is back. Uh, he's out there on the golf field just celebrating life after he murdered two people and got away with it. So let's talk about that. Um, and so much more. Let's jump right into it. We've got, I've got a little segment here called Wrong Song. Now, let's break this down. The first one is the National Anthem. Okay. This was great. Wow, nine million views. Open up the safe, bitches got to the safe. Nice. You know Never that. I heard that part. Oh, you didn't hear that? Please rise. No, that national part of the national anthem. Open up the safe, bitches got to the safe. You can hear people all pissed off. <laughs> it depends where it is. If this is like in the rural America, those motherfuckers will riot. Oh, yeah. It's done. Yeah, dude. But I love that there's cursing in it. Everyone's trying to have a wholesome day at the ball game. Open up the safe. Bitches got a lot of safe. Please rise for our national anthem. Oh, TikTok. Open up the safe. Bitches got a lot of safe. <laughs> it's a TikTok. The guy was just having a beautiful moment on the American flag on TikTok. Yep. And then once the rap kicks in, he, st- he backs out. He's zooming in the American flag. And then he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> quick one. Someone <laughs> cut that quick. Well, that's what happens when you play the wrong song. This one is a little harder to explain. This one is so strange. I don't understand how it happened. You may have heard that Bernie Sanders created a Twitch account. And that in itself is already a strange, is a strange enough thing. You know this uh, community live stream fails? Yeah. 
in a world where Bernie Sanders can be featured on live stream fails is a world that I'm not sure I want to live on. <laughs> not to mention his first and only stream. Uh, tra- someone explain this to me. So uh, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, yeah so I, I believe well, this was the inaugural stream, the first time they, they did a Twitch stream. And this was this clip that we're about to watch was from the pre-show. You know, they were just kind of pre-streaming on a card with um, some patriotic music playing. And then, um, you know, it's, I think the music was on a loop of just fucking, you know, national anthem and that kind of stuff. And then right before they went live, what you're about to play happened. That's a slogan, not me, us. Yeesh, I don't like that. Not me, us. It's a mouthful. Yeah, it doesn't really flow, does it? Not me, us. Okay, Bernie, whatever. You can come up with something better. Bernie, hit us up. We'll, we'll consult. So this is his first ever stream. And... Do you, do you hear that they're playing? <laughs> Hit us with that one more time. It was really low, but if you hear it, they start playing the Russian National Anthem. Is that right, Dan? Uh, not the Russian, the, the Soviet Union. The USSR, <laughs> yeah. communism. Yes, the communism. Which people frequently yeah. accuse him of being. Yes, correct. How the fuck did that happen, Bernie? <laughs> How did you play communist... USSR. Play, play it just one more time. I'm going to bump the audio way up. Not me, us? That doesn't look good with the communism music. Not me. All of us. Vote for Bernie Sanders. Communism. USSR returns again. Now, I got to say... Bad luck, Bernie. It's not a great look. Not a great look when he's got those accusations <laughs> but, already going around. But, like, how does that even happen? So the only thing I can think of, the only thing that makes sense, is like I said, there was like a loop of patriotic music and an intern... Why does the USSR somebody, theme song get in a loop of patriotic it, it, music? It had to have been a troll. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I can think. Somebody just put it on the playlist. So at first when I saw this, I was like, Dan, I don't believe this is real, but Dan went to the Twitch website... And showed me it was highlighted directly from his stream. It's on the Twitch yeah. website. It's now deleted, but th- there's re-uploads on YouTube. So. I saw it on Twitch website, so I can confirm that it's real. Yeah, it happened. Man, this is. I feel like this could single-handedly crush his whole <laughs> platform. Yeah. Well, it seemed like not a lot of people noticed, so um, I guess us pointing it out is probably going to... How is Fox <laughs> News not reporting this? I know, you'd think that they would jump all 24, over that shit. I guess they're not threatened by Bernie this time, because he's not really doing that well. Well, he's in second place. I thought he was in third place. He's in second place. I don't I don't think Bernie's got a chance. He's too fucking old, man. It is a big problem to a lot of people. He's so old, yeah. dude. I feel you. <laughs> he looks like... Do you know what? He looks like he should be like... Uh, he looks like he volunteers at the school, like, watching kids during recess in fifth <laughs> grade or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, not president, man. Well, fair enough. What should Bernie be doing for a living? He's, like, bagging groceries, you know? Not, like, because he's retired. That's, like, what old people do to, like, you know. Greeter at Walmart? Yeah, he's a greeter at Walmart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> Did you know... That Walmart <coughs> uses government subsidies. That'd be fire, actually. He's just <laughs> the greeter at Walmart. He's just talking shit. That would Walmart. be. He has a lot to say about Walmart. Yes, he does. Did you know that Walmart doesn't pay their employees enough and they have to use food stamps? <laughs> Welcome to Walmart. Every day, low prices, but at what cost? <coughs> God, my voice is so fragile. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know how that happened, man, but goddamn. I do want to say, Soviet uh, national anthem, pretty fire. Definitely better than our national anthem. Just as a piece of music. Bro, that's fuck. That's dangerous talk. It's treasonous, I know, but it is a badass national if anthem. If you said that during, like, the 50s, I think you might get locked up. I'd be on McCarthy's list, that's right. Welcome to Walmart. In aisle five, we have diapers, which are one of the biggest pollutants on Earth. I recommend using a cloth and a bobby pin. You have to hand wash the shit out of the diaper. You guys doing disposable diapers or are you uh, you doing the cloth thing? 
Dis- yes, I, I, disposable diapers are one of the best things that were ever invented. I mean, it's so convenient. We have a friend that tried using cloth and bobby pin. You you understand that they're just shitting in a cloth, and then you have to wash it out. I mean, what the fuck? I'm not touching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever sure. seen baby shit? I have, thanks to you. Oh, was that your first and only time you saw no, baby I shit? I, I've seen it other times, yeah, but you posted a picture the other day. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, yeah, Where all over Hila. Yeah, <laughs> that was Hila. <laughs> Welcome to Walmart. Yeah, I love that's a good sketch, man. This is good comedy writing right here on the H3 podcast. Not that I'll ever execute it, but right. But I like to think about things that are funny from time to time. ASAP Rocky was in Sweden <laughs> and he got locked up. Your boy ASAP Rocky got locked up in Sweden. He's been in jail for five days. Is that right, Ian? He's, he's, he sources tell us that the rapper is sleeping on a yoga mat with no blankets. There's a prisoner in the next cell with severe mental issues who slams his head against the concrete wall and hurls feces every which way. Feces that are not cleaned up. Damn. The water, we're told, is not clean and the food is not edible. For the first five days, uh, ASAP Rocky ate an apple a day, and that's it. Um, Luckily, we have a video of the situation, and so we can kind of make a call for ourselves. Now, in this video, um, he's basically stalked by, I don't know if they're drunk or what, but they're definitely some hooliganisms, like just really harassing them. Uh, So let's watch... Let's watch and see and make a distinction if if this was justified. We're definitely trying to defuse the situation, you know? So you were saying, Ian, that basically we don't know what instigated this conflict there's no video or anything from before yeah we're kind of jumping mid you know situation here so i'm not sure why they're following him to begin with if but i'm, I'm fans, w- they don't seem to know who he is so it oh really to, yeah later on someone explains they ask can i tell them that you're famous and he's like no you don't do that what they don't know who, even who he is but why are they stalking him then so strange well, I, I have to assume that they didn't instigate it. I mean, first of all, they don't want any trouble. It's quite obvious already from the first 20 seconds here. And these guys are following them around for a long time quite aggressively. I mean, what possibly could have happened to instigate that? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they do know who he is, and then they just played <laughs> dumb later on. I, I have know. a feeling they must know who he is. He's got a huge entourage. It's kind of obvious that he's like a famous dude. He's dressed in designer clothes, you know what I mean? He's talking about his headphone already, Ian. (laughs) Why is he already already talking about his headphone? Did that already happen? No, that's a good question. I don't think so. Maybe the video's cut out of order. He keeps saying headphone, headphone, because I guess at one point... His if you body go forward. It's probably it's in this video, so maybe the the person just cut it. But what happened? Order. The bodyguard slammed his headphones or some shit, or threw his headphones. Well, at one point, the guy hits the bodyguard with his headphones. Oh, which seemingly smashes it, and then he starts well, I, demanding compensation. I fail to see how that's their fault. You're right. Yeah. Why would you attack someone with your headphones, you ding dap? But again, I mean, this video does start mid situation, so it you can't really say what happened. Let's piece Briar. this together. Did his homies get locked up too, Ian? Oh, here's the headphone clip. So why is he already talking about his headphones? Well, you see there was a cut there. I mean, this might be out of order. It's it looks to... like the person's trying to do a little flashback, get mm. creative with their editing here. 
But there's so okay, if that's before the headphone attack, the infamous headphone attack. Dude, who first of all, who tries to fight like a four hundred pound huge massive black dude? Like already big mistake, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's like a little twink trying to throw down against like a four hundred pound monster. Yeah. Bodyguard. But that that he's gotta be drunk or something. He has to be under the influence. Possible. To throw down like that on a huge dude. So they get in a brawl. Homie takes off his headphones, which of course is right the there. That that was where he smashed the headphones over the bodyguard. <laughs> Homie grabs the headphones and is like treats them like a nunchucks. <laughs> Pretty poor weapon choice. Oh yeah, he just struck him in the face. What's going on here? What's maybe even he asked them to pay for his headphones. Homie just punched him in the face. You can see it right here. And not only did he not respond, he walked away. I don't know why they're being held in prison. Dude is clearly just attacked them. And they didn't, they're not even reacting violently yet. Yeah, he just shrugs off the hit, which like you said, I mean, he's a pretty big guy. So it's probably like. Because he's like, I'm like, I will murder you. Go away. (laughs) Right. You know. I mean, it seems ludicrous that they're locking him up in such horrible conditions, too. And and you said that he can be tried for to to stay in prison for six years, Ian. Yeah, that's what he's facing up to six years. Uh, If that actually happens, I don't see that very likely. We'll have a dip. We'll have a diplomatic crisis. (laughs) You know. Yep. Because I already see a lot of of rappers and shit saying they're not going. Like you know, fuck Sweden. I'm never going there. I'm with them. Yeah, which, I mean, uh, I'm not a, a Sweden expert, I guess you could say. But uh, I do know that the music scene is huge there. So, like, you know, artists do go to Sweden pretty often. So if, if they all boycott it, that'll be a big deal. Well, everyone's rich there. So, they, you know, right. like, those yeah. bookers are rich in Sweden. Yeah. But beautiful country. I went there for the uh, video game thing with Overkill. Oh, that's right. I mean, it's a beautiful Sweden. country. We had a great experience there. Beautiful city. We we're in Stockholm. Anybody which, sm- smash headphones over here? No, nobody threatened me with headphones or anything. Huh? Weird. Um, but I'm not ASAP Rocky. Don't be so hard on yourself. Maybe he's just not a fan. Does ASAP Rocky have a rival? Maybe he thought he was Travis Scott, <laughs> <laughs> and ASAP wasn't down. <laughs> But, you know, we have to, at times like this, appreciate. I know I haven't watched the whole video, and you guys hate that, but give me a break, okay? We have to, at times, appreciate how fucking fantastic America is. Because this we know what's going on here, okay? There is justice, for the most part, in this land. Take, for example, the Beatles, who went to Japan. They had some weed on them. They were about to be locked up for life. There is justice here. Do, try going to Dubai, okay? If you kiss a dude, they'll lock you up for life. Come on, and um, this is America. The guy was defending himself. You know, you got to remember it's scary going to other countries because they'll just fuck. I went to Mexico with a drone for me and Ela's like anniversary or something, and these motherfuckers. Shook me down at the airport, at a huge airport in Puerto Vallarta. They saw I had a drone, an expensive drone, and they made me pay the VAT tax. They tra- they were saying I had to pay them a thousand dollars, or I had to go back to America. I couldn't exit the airport. What? Yeah, I got shook down for a thousand dollars in the fucking Mexican airport, a main hub. Was it I- even in a? Uh, was it in a box still? It was in its box. Yes, it was in its traveling box, and the guy recognized it, and he was like. You have to pay me the VAT tax or you can't leave. I was like, what the fuck? I look up the law and I'm like, that's not what the law says. He starts trying to haggle with me. He's like, no, not a thousand. Okay, 800. And I was like, wow. you know, and that's the last time I went to Mexico. But I'm just saying, you've got to appreciate America, man. Because this, because when you're, you're in other people's hands when you're outside the country, man. I can't believe the Swedes locked him up for this shit. This guy's asking for shit, dude. I can see why they arrested him 
initially. But Fine, I, yeah. I feel like once you watch the video, yes. you, know, you release him on bail or something. Homie smashed his headphones over his bodyguard, and he's asking for compensation after he punched him in the face. Look how look how desperate they're trying to dis, to defuse this. Hey, stop. Why is stop? He, he, he fucked with my headphones. Bro, you smashed it over him. We saw it. Just for the cameras, we don't want no problems with these boys. They keep following them. Look at them. They keep following them. I mean, I don't know how long this has been, but they've clearly walked several blocks away from them. And... Yeah, and like you said, I mean, he's obviously trying to de-escalate the situation. I mean, I think that... That should be taken. What can you do? Yeah. What else can you do? At a certain point, it's like, at when is it? When do you need to defend yourself and tell these creeps to fuck off? So it, it culminates with them being getting their ass beat, like hardcore, hardcore, getting their ass beat, <laughs> like straight up, uh, 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 world star style. Yeah. I don't show that because I like being monetized. Right. But what happens eventually, which we're we're getting to, is that. Basically, the whole gang starts curb stomping, uh, homie. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a, it's a beaten. They give him a beaten. Yeah, but he's, sure. I'm sure he's fine. But you actually, we need to take a break, right, Dan? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we are going to throw it to a quick commercial break. We're going to continue this when we get back, guys. Do not go away. We're about to watch Rocky get beat down. These punks that leads him to going to prison. We'll be right back. You having a long day at work? How about a tough day at school? Are you stuck at the office? Well, it's time to treat yourself to the meal you deserve. On demand from your favorite restaurant. Restaurants come straight to you with DoorDash. And let me tell you what I've got for you. A free $5 off your favorite restaurant from DoorDash. Listen up closely. Because DoorDash connects you to your favorite restaurants in your city. Ordering is so easy. You just download the app. You choose what you want to eat. And a dasher will bring it to you anywhere you are. Not only is that burger place you love on DoorDash already, but over 300, 300, 310,000 other amazing restaurants are too. DoorDash connects you with door to door delivery in over 3,300 cities in all 50 states and Canada. You order from your local go tos, or you could choose from your favorite chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick fil A, and the Cheese Guy Factory. Basically, whatever you want, they're going to bring it to you. They're going to dash it right to your dome. Don't worry about dinner. Let dinner come to you with DoorDash. Now, here's what I was talking about in the beginning. They're giving away $5 for free to our listeners off your first order of over $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code H3. That's five free freaking dollars, baby. Off your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store and enter promo code H3 again. Promo code H3 for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. Give it a shot, baby. You're going to love this shit, bud. Finding the perfect software is always tough because there's this genius software out there that somebody has made tailored just to your problem, yet you don't know how to find it, one. And second of all, you don't know if it's good. You don't know if you're downloading a freaking virus, which is always my problem, you know. I swear to God that hint I didn't get on my computer, uh, it wasn't my fault. It was the virus's fault. So you don't have to worry about that with Capterra. What Capterra does is they aggregate the best softwares n as niche as possible for any uh, problem you have. They give it reviews, and they and it's this free online resource that helps you find the best software solutions for your business. They've got over 850,000 reviews for, pro for products from real software users. You discover everything you need to make an informed decision. And you can search more than 700 specific categories of software, everything from project management to email marketing to yoga studio management software. That's niche. Those yoga studio managers, man. Then you need a specialized software for that one. No matter what kind of software your business needs, Capterra makes it easy to discover the right solution fast. Join the millions of people who are using Capterra each month to find the right tools for their business. For example, we needed some software for like a content management system, just something to manage our t our day-to-day -day tasks on Teddy Fresh. And 
on Capterra, you can look up content management system. You can see the reviews. You can read it. These are all reputable, great softwares, and you can make that good, in informed decision. So I highly recommend getting that tight little ass over to Capterra.com slash H3 for free today to find the tools to make an informed software decision for your business. That's Capterra.com slash H3. Uh, Capterra, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A. Dot com slash H3. That's Captera Software Selection Simplified. Okay, welcome back. Let's continue on with the video. I guess they're asking some of the other Swedes to help translate. He's saying, I don't know him. He's following us. He hit me with his headphones on the head. I should beat the shit out of him. I mean, they didn't. I don't, I don't understand. How can they lock them up after this shit? Got a Papa John's cup she's holding? Hold on, what did she say that he said? Dude, what is he, this guy is such so a weird. weirdo, dude? So He's boring. gonna get his ass beat. Like, come on. Oh, they wandered off. And then the. So, by the way, did you hear that? That other Swedish girl who's there said that guy touched his, her ass and her other friend's ass. So, because they're fucking hooligans, they're like drunk hooligans. So what the the next video I I guess I can play the audio but anyway the next one is basically <coughs> all of them beating the shit out of him. I find it strange that that ASAP Rocky's the one that got singled out too because I mean the bodyguard was the one I mean sure he was in there stomping him and shit. I think in that article it says that Rocky and his team are being They all got They probably all got pumped, yeah. yeah. I mean in the video which we're not going to show where the actual fight happens I mean he himself is like yeah he's there <laughs> he's definitely in it so. but man those guys had an ass beating coming i'm gonna watch it maybe you can hear this oh no you can't hear the sound but here i'll just describe yeah oh yeah so rocky's the one that threw his ass to the ground it looks like yeah like pretty hard and then there's like yeah all four of them just beating the shit out of him he looks good doing it man with his gucci shorts and shit he's looking fresh <laughs> they just speed the but you know, it's like everyone's just wanting to beat this guy's ass so hard, and then it's like, <laughs> once the floodgates open, homie had it coming. I don't have to say, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't like. I doubt they really seriously injured them. They just gave him an ass beating, you know. Not sure about that. So yeah, I mean, hopefully not. Yeah, I hope not. If he's seriously injured, then hey, then I that would be so different, good. right? Hey, <laughs> Listen, to these kids, Swedish kids. Fucking rocky hey. dad. <laughs> This is as they're watching him beat the shit out of him. Ah. Yeah. It's a tough one, but I think Sweden should just get his ass on a plane and send him home. Just go saying, home. Go get home, the fuck don't out come here. back kind of thing. I mean, that's usually what happens <coughs> in these kind of situations when an artist is on tour or whatever. You mentioned the, uh, it wasn't the Beatles. I think it was just Paul McCartney with Wings or whatever. Oh, I, I thought it was the whole Beatles. They, I think it was the Beatles. They were on tour in, J in you, Japan. You know your Beatles lore, so I'm, I'll, I'll defer yeah. on that one. But, thank um, you. Thank you for thank you for saying that. <laughs> um, here's some of the people in the community reacting to the news. Tyler, the creator, said, no more Sweden for me ever. And frankly, I don't blame him. That's exactly right. You got that midsummer gift. <laughs> what are you supposed to do when some homie is stalking you? You can't. And atta he attacked him. What are we dealing with here? Schoolboy Q said, I'm not going no more either. What's Flacco? It's like his nickname. ASAP Rocky's nickname. Oh, Flacco? 
What's the relation? That's just pretty flacco's is like people call them that. Okay. I'm not sure why. Just like how Dick how Dick from Richard kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. Exa- exactly like that. Shorthand. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't explain it. Yeah. This one little yachty. Me three. I will never hit Sweden again. I should I should get in on this. Me four. I'm <laughs> I will never perform in Sweden. <laughs> I should po- I should post that. Mm. Post Malone got in on it. He posted on Instagram. I just saw this today. He said, "Always strive and prosper. Love you very much. Justice for Rocky. Always strive and prosper." I'm not sure what the just a little proverb in there. He's a big Star Trek fan. Strive and prosper, my dog. <laughs> I stand with Rocky and request his release from Swedish officials. Sign the petition. Yeah, he shouldn't be locked up. That's outrageous. Especially if the conditions are as bad as they say. That's outrageous. Yeah. I mean, it's two weeks, too. I mean... (laughs) Fuck that. That's a long time to just be held. I should should retweet and say, I'm not... I'm pledging never to perform in Sweden. Well, all this talk about uh, Sweden... All this injustice got me hungry for some American, good old American cuisine. And I don't know if you guys saw this. There's a KFC, a new KFC sandwich, the Cheeto sandwich, that is a desecration of God <coughs> himself. <coughs> Look at this disgusting mess. Fucking, who wants Cheetos in a sandwich? You know, why are you barking at the bag, Shredder? Shredder, you're barking at a bag, dude. It's a bag, Shredder. <coughs> Cheetos on a sandwich. You know, I've been I have a problem with KFC marketing in general. I I I don't like what they've been doing. I don't like the gay kernel. Uh <laughs> I don't like the emo kernel. And I don't and I definitely don't like uh the Cheeto kernel. I don't know what's the gay kernel. Was there a gay kernel? I think you're thinking of the CGI one, right? Yeah, maybe. The like weird <laughs> hipster Colonel or whatever. The hipster. I don't think he colonel. was gay. He yeah. was he was just he was I don't know what I meant by that. Colonel. Yeah. Young and handsome gay. You know, same thing. Um <clears throat> <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like anything. Oh yeah, they had the uh Oh and they fucking claimed our video, the bobblehead shit at the music festival. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. So let's see. You want to see the sandwich? It's disgusting as you're gonna get so by the way, Ian got these. Look at this! Bo- oh my God, <laughs> dude! Look how greasy that is. I got three sandwiches, one for everybody. There's grease pooling at the bottom of the bag. Look at this! Don't consume this. <laughs> this is, is poison. Fucking wild! How? And of so course, just because is. if the sandwich. Well, let's see. Let's break this open. This is disgusting. Oh my God, dude. By the way, they make it look like all slick, like um, they put the Cheetos like f- flavoring on the chicken, but you can see they just dump some like Cheeto sauce on it. <laughs> this is disgusting, you guys. Oh, so gross. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite of this. All right. You guys want to try it? Cause I got a sandwich for y'all. Uh, I appreciate it. I I do not eat chicken, so I will have to pass. And I'm I'm feeling pretty proud of that choice right now. <laughs> oh. How is it? <laughs> oh my god. Can you see the bottom of this? Can you see all the Cheeto shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is so gross. I can't tell if I'm being baited by all the trolling because I'm trying my best to make it look disgusting, which it is. And I hate everything about them, but I still get the feeling that I'm still being baited by them and they're getting what they want from me. Even though I'm saying... Never go to KFC. The food is disgusting. It will literally poison you, giving you diarrhea. I don't like anything they do. Let's see if Shredder will even eat it. Shredder, do you want this? I don't even think Shredder should eat don't, this. Don't. <laughs> I wouldn't give that to Shredder. He's a picky eater. Yeah, he ate it. I guess your dog will like it. That's yeah. the least, the most I can say for it. Well, I really don't know what to say. I guess there's not really much else to say about it, is there, guys? It's pretty gross. Ian, do you want to try one? We got that X. I didn't want to put it's it's leaving a mark everywhere. I just put it on the table. It's like 
<laughs> you know, like when you wipe it, your ass and you can't get the shit out and you just keep wiping and wiping? That's what this bag is like. Dude, it bled through like 30 napkins. I'll try it if you want. Look at all the nap layer of napkins it oiled through. Oh, God. Ian dude. says he's down to try it, so I'm going to come grab one. You want to come try this? Ugh! He can take it. He can take it back. You can just take the whole bag. I don't want to smell it. Here, take all that. <laughs> Gross. Shredder likes it. Please do not ever go to KFC for any reason. All right, Ian. We got him on screen. Here, pop him. Pop pop yourself up there. There you go. Get a shot because I'm afraid mine. I didn't get a good shot of it. So soggy. Yeah, show show it to the camera before you eat it. Ugh. No, but show like the Cheeto, the Cheeto. Cr yeah, <laughs> Cheetos in, in a sandwich. How deprived is your life? What is this like sauce? Mayonnaise. Looks that like would mayonnaise. be uh, the Colonel's special jizz. <laughs> oh boy. That's hipster Colonel's uh, jizz. Put yourself back up before you eat it. Yeah, I want to see this. I want the full experience. Can you open it and get a good shot of what's in there? Because. Show them, take the bun off and show them that there's actual Cheetos on it. So I mean, this is a desecration here. of life. Ugh. This chicken, chicken. It's just a bed of full Cheetos. They're not even like smashed up or like made in any way easier to but eat. But you would, you would think they made the breading for the chicken out of Cheetos. No, they just squirt some Cheeto sauce on it. <laughs> Ugh. Right. And this chicken lived its whole here life. Go. Here we go. Just to be covered. By Cheeto sauce. <laughs> Immediate revulsion. Okay. Show me. Show. I mean, show you. <laughs> I'm like, cut one bite, and I'm like, <laughs> you're I covered can't use in my hands anymore. They're like, you know what's? I'll grab you some paper towel. They're like, you know what's the worst part of eating Cheetos? How your hands get covered in all this shit. So what we want to do is create a sandwich that gives you that same effect, where if you touch it once, you have to take a shower. What, Dan? I'd probably rather eat the box than the sandwich <laughs> in the box. <laughs> well, do you want to take a bite of the box? I'd like to watch that. I'll save it for later. Well, on the plus side, Shredder does like it, so I will give. That's gonna give him mad shits, dude. Yeah, but this is right. so greasy. Oh my god! I'm telling you, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. There's like literally an an uh, several ounces of grease that came out of the box and down the bag. Like, if you had to break into a safe, just put one of these on the top of it, and it will melt through the safe. Wow. Oh. High-level shit. That's some ingenuity right That's there. what it's going to be doing to your intestines if you go up to KFC and eat this. Because <laughs> I want to make, as as absolutely clear, I do not want to be trolled or baited by KFC into promoting their disgusting acid sandwich that could burn through bank vaults. Okay? <laughs> if you eat this sandwich, you are a deprived human being... And you deserve to be poisoned by, essentially, you're drinking bleach if you eat this sandwich. Ian just took another bite. I he did? To say. I'm going to take another bite, too. <laughs> on second thought, it's pretty good. Grow on you, Ian. Oh, this is and... actually, I'm going back for more later. You're enjoying it. It's mayonnaise, bro. I don't like that there's mayonnaise on it. No, this is not good. I'm not even going to pretend it's pretty bad. Bro, I thought that was cheese. It's a big dollop of mayonnaise. Nice. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, Shredder. I think I just killed my dog. I love you, Shredder, but he loves cheese. Actually, Shredder loves Cheeto dust. This, so, this is previously known to you? Yeah, because oh, okay. I, I let him lick my fingers, and he goes crazy. <laughs> How you often could, are you uh, eating Cheetos? You could probably eat this, Dan, because I don't think this is meat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, they got us. There's your little promo, KFC. Do they even use real chicken? Wasn't there, like, a lawsuit about KFC doesn't actually use real chicken? Like, it's so genetically altered. I that believe that's an urban legend. I, I've heard that as well, and I think I looked into it once, and it's it's an urban legend. Let's say it's real for the sake of the story. Okay. They yeah, have like totally freakish, real. they have freak birds, right? That don't even have real breasts. Well, that I think is true. But um, KFC freak. I think, you know what the urban legend is, is that they uh, 
they had to not call themselves Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore because the chicken it would be false advertising. That's like the, but I don't think that's real. I Can you find a picture of their freak chickens? Of the KFC freak chickens? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't think it's just KFC. It's like most of the. Chicken is this industry. what it is? Like these featherless chickens? No, they're not. Those aren't fat enough. Do you just type KFC in freak chicken. chicken rumors? Oh, well, that obviously looks like a Photoshop. I mean, I'm not getting sucked <laughs> in by that word shit or any of this stuff. Maybe it is an urban legend. But I'll tell you what, their chicken does taste like a big old dookie in my shorts covered in Cheeto flakes. They're like, dude, we, if we covered dog shit in Cheeto flakes, people will buy it. Yeah, I found it on Snopes. The, the claim, the government forced KFC to stop using the word chicken in the name because they serve meat derived from mutated animals, and it is false. So, But go. do they serve meat from mutated animals? Well, I mean, they're for sure genetically engineered, but so is all the meat you eat from any fast food restaurant. Really? Animals that have been genetically mutated? I know they do it to fruits and plants and and vegetables. Yeah, I mean, they probably don't use the word mutant because people freak out when they hear that, but um, that's effectively what it is, yeah. Genetically. They've ge- they've modified the DNA of chickens. Well, Are you yeah, sure about that? I don't think they're, like, modifying in a lab, but uh, they feed them a bunch of hormones and all that right. shit. Right, okay. Well, guys, Cheeto, the new Cheeto sandwich is available now with dopes of mayonnaise so big you think it's a piece of cheese. Man, have you guys heard about the World Wife Caring Championship? I mean, this is a weird one. The World Wife Caring? The World Wife Caring Championship. And I'm happy to report a Lithuanian couple wins the title for the second year in a row. These guys are champs. Dude, Lithuania is killing it lately. I'm so jealous of Lithuania's title that they defended the title of World Wife Caring (laughs) Champion. Watch this. You can imagine the jokes that, per- that, you know, the perfect metaphor for marriage. Am I right, guys? They're carrying them in the ocean. Oh, he just ate shit. This is not what I expected. Or at least the way. I love carrying. the form. Yeah, because they got a haul ass, dude. Dude, his wife's head is just underwater. Oh, she lifted it. The man needs to complete the course carrying his wife. And also it continues through life. No. It's a strange event, man. Who the fuck thought of this? Wow. Also, this is kind of awesome. You know that the people take it super seriously and like the wives like go on a mega fast before the event so they can weigh less. Look, there's a ref running next to him to. Well, they can't break any rules. Damn! Prizes are awarded to the first three couples to cross finish line. The first prize is a gift card to Applebee's. With one minute and six seconds, a couple from Lithuania crushed it. Wow. And they won the coveted $500 to Applebee's. This music sucks. Yeah. What do you all think about this? America does lame-ass sports. Football? That's true. They got way cooler shit. Especially Eastern Europe. It seems like they've got... They got the weird sport. I like that shit where they like yeah. put a wheel of cheese down a hill and everyone has to chase it. Right, right. Yeah. And everyone just like eats shit and dies. <laughs> Can you pull up one of those uh, wheel chases? Yeah. Those are fantastic. That's a sport that I can get behind. In Japan, they've got... I love, uh, uh, you know, Japanese game shows are so great too. America's shit is boring, man. These motherfuckers are probably trying to find, like, the smallest wife. They they search for their wives based on how well they would perform in this competition. Here, look at this shit. Where is this from? Like, Netherlands? Uh, it's actually in Britain. <laughs> oh, Britain. God bless uh, the queen. Bless the queen. Dude, they eat shit so hard. Oh, my God. Look at these people. They're fucking tumbling to their death. <laughs> All for a block of cheese, baby. Listen to the epic music. Yes. Epic. Gallant. Maybe we Beautiful. It. Lustrious. Queen. This is the Queen's God. I love the imagery of like the beautiful village side. 
the, pri- the pride of the nation, the gallant creatures that roam the country, and a bunch of drunken hooligans tumbling down a hill chasing a block of cheese. Ah, yes. Nothing says Britain quite like this. Look at these guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here we go, baby. Get that block. Oh, that's a kid. They put kids down the hill. These motherfuckers don't give a shit. Dude, they're fucking hard. <laughs> Dude, this kid knows how to chase a block of cheese. Oh, she's got a bloody nose. Those poor girls. Oh, my goodness. Oh my god, how do you even eat shit that hard? And, like, get back up. This is... Look at... This video is so insane. I can't tell if they are... If this is, like, a self-aware ironic video, or if this is... They just see it as this galleon. National Geographic is where this is from. Because they just cut to the cheesemaker with a block of cheese, and he's weighing it. It has to be exactly eight pounds. And he's wearing an apron. It's very... All very official. Ah, yes. We worked 12 years and aged the cheese to perfection before we rolled it down a hill and broke some eight-year-old's nose. Also, maybe it's just the angle of the camera or something, but that hill doesn't seem that steep. Like, these people fucking suck at this. I think it's really muddy and slippery. I guess that's probably it. I love how epic the music is, man. I mean, it's... Oh, this goes way back. Look at this. Oh, see, these guys aren't goofy. These guys are actually charging down the hill. This is an ancient tradition. Yes, the ancient tradition of chasing cheese. Do you understand this is what real culture, this is what real history looks like? Yeah. Do we chase cheese in America? What do we do? We play football? Come on. Seriously. Baseball? Fucking boring. No. We've got, we've got some cool ones, though, don't we? Really? Like what? Fucking Nickelodeon guts. Guts? Yeah, That's not a national pastime. No? Look at look at how we look how the perfection that goes into this cheese that just tumbles down a hill. Nobody eats it. Listen to this guy. Ah yes. Yes, take a tumble for your country. There she goes, the old cheese block. <laughs> that guy ate shit so hard. Oh, nice recovery. Oh, and he won. Yeah, that guy was a pretty. That guy's a. That guy's, a, that guy's an all star. Look at that. Yeah, that guy's a champ. That's what a champion looks like. Fuck. That kid's dead. Uh, Flo Early died. Have suffered a, a neck breakage. Look at this kid with this block. He's got a broken arm for Christ's sake. Yeah, I love these fucks. Does the winner get? I guess the winner gets the cheese. That's what all the, the hubbub about. Man, yeah. I guess everyone cheese. was just. You know what this came about too? What's so great about England is like, you've got these medieval manors, and people are starving. You have starving peasants, so you make them go, risk life and limb for a block of cheese. Ah, I see. So these are actually people that are very hungry. Which makes it funnier when you have, you know, money. Absolutely. So epic. Congratulations, dude. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful uh, stuff here, fellas. Speaking of baseball, I have. I want to ask you guys something. You tell me if I'm crazy, okay? Okay. My dad. Oh, sends me a vi- uh, picture, or not me, but in our family chat. He sends me a picture, and he shows me a beach ball deflated at his feet at a Dodger game. Mm. And it says, highlight so far, caught and defeated beach ball. So you know how at Dodger games or sporting events, people bring beach balls, and they bounce them around, and they play with them with the crowd. Yep. So I start, I had a flashback of when I would go, my dad used to take us to ball games all the time. He's sports obsessed. He's a mega fan of the Dodgers. And so he's such a grouch that he thinks the volleyball distracts from the game. And so when one comes his way, he grabs it and stabs it. What? 
uh, and puts it at his feet. And he does that with his family there. I'm a small kid. They're trying to be at the ball game and have fun. Oh, he did this back in the day. He's always done this. In fact, you know how er- the wave, uh, national pastime, the wave. Sure. So he forbid us from participating in the wave because it distracts from the game. He hates it. That's cruel. He would scout. He would only scowl at people around us. <laughs> My dad also. I was terrified of foul balls. It's scary. You got a fucking ball skyrocket in the sky comes right down on you. I was terrified of it so much I didn't want to go to games. So. Somebody died at Dodger Stadium from a foul ball. Are you serious? Two years ago. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. Hit in the head. Well, I was. I, I I used to always wonder why are. Why are foul balls always, it seems like they're always coming right at me, like every game when I was a kid. It's, it's terrifying. I don't like it. It made me not want to go to the games. And I found out my dad would intentionally get the tickets in the foul ball area because he was so obsessed he wanted to get balls. Oh, uh, sure. So he knew that I hated it so much that I, I, I honestly was there. Every time there was a pitch, I was just paranoid that the ball was coming to me. I was on my toes the whole time. I was miserable there. He knew that, and he still sat us in foul ball territory. How else are you going to learn? And so I'm, I'm, I'm having these childhood memories flooding back after seeing this. But when I saw this, I was like, oh, my God, I just realized my dad is a total psycho. Like, you have to be a psycho, right, to <laughs> grab the beach ball and stab it. <laughs> I don't know about psycho, but it's definitely, yeah, I mean, people are just trying to have fun, man. Like, well, I said, Dad. Shit on people like that. I said, Dad, how did everyone around you respond? He said, quote, they all booed me. Music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> all right, never mind. I'm on your dad. He said they so all weird. booed him. So imagine me as a child tr- trying to learn to enjoy baseball, and everybody's booing me and my family. <laughs> That's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I'm trying to deal with these traumatic memories. My dad is at the Dodger game being booed. <laughs> That's pretty epic. I mean, obviously, it's different being the son and being there. But well, he was with my sister that time. Okay. And apparently, she's brainwashed because she's down. She's like, "Oh, I hate all that oh, shit." Oh, she ball stabber too. No, she says, "I, I don't, I would never do that. I don't have the balls to do that." But but she supports his. Because she's, I don't know, but I, I find it absolutely insane. I mean, you're not going to stand and do the wave. You're just going to scowl at everyone. But that's even beyond um, stabbing the beach ball. The wave one is beyond because the beach ball. OK, so I'm not going to defend your dad doing that. But with the beach ball, at least you can maybe make an argument that it's like the ball. It sometimes gets thrown out onto the field and it's like interfering with the game like that. That. You know, if you're super serious about the sport, I could see that bothering you. But the wave, what the fuck? What's wrong with the wave? You're at the ball game. These are part, you're not going to change the sport. This is what people do. They yeah. have fun. It's part of being there. Right. I says, Dad, if the shit bothers you, go watch at home on the TV. <laughs> you know? That is wild that he actually stabs it. He brings up a little They're knife booing him. him. He says, I'm, I'm like, Dad, this, you're so crazy now that I'm remembering all this. He goes, you're not a sports nut, so you can't relate, he says. So am I crazy? You know, and I, now I'm having memories because in my life, my dad has caught three foul balls. That's a lot. Even getting one is, is incredible. He's gotten three. And I swear to you, I remember shit like this going down. You, met, you know this clip? This is my dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's my dad. He raised, you've Dude, seen when him a ball rip it comes, other people's hands. When a ball comes, he'll dive on some stranger's lap and pry it from their hands. Do you understand? <gasps> this is my dad, the same guy who one minute before stabbed a beach ball and was booed by everyone in the section. This is my dad. This is who I've grown up with. Going to dodge. No wonder I don't like sports. No wonder I don't like baseball. <laughs> She's high fiving. You don't think that I? So legendary. You don't think that I want to like baseball? You don't think that I want to have pastime? Oh, he threw it to the girl. Yeah. That's my dad. He's like, thanks, dude. <laughs> Wait, that's... A, is that the second time that that girl got... I think it's just a compilation of people ripping off kids, a.k.a. my dad. Dude, that guy... St- oh, my God. Look at this. This is my dad. See ya, you idiot kid. Work on your reach, dumbass. 
That's my, I swear to God, that's my dad. I'm not even kidding. My dad, there, you, you don't get three foul balls in your life without elbowing a couple kids in the face. Right, 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 right. I swear to you, I've seen him dive in the bleachers. He pried it from that lady's hand. Dude, so embarrassing. Now I understand why I hate sports. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, what? Wait. What? Why is homie so butthurt? Well, that was uncalled for. My dad definitely would have pocketed it. <laughs> Walter, he sees a little girl with a Jeter shirt. And check this out. He's trying to give it to her. And this lady in the orange shirt. <laughs> She's not letting him throw it. Nope. I don't know about the lady in the orange shirt. No. <laughs> she didn't have the sign. How great. Kept they had a charity softball game in Milwaukee. He's starting to throw parts of his uniform. Damn, his dude. Well. His shoe to a young boy, but the woman next to him wrestled the cleat away. Maybe, maybe your dad's right. We're just not, we're not sports nuts. We don't get it. Well, do we have any, did, do we have any fans of the podcast that are sports nuts? Probably not. That's not our demo, is it? I do wonder. Well, I'm sure there's some some baseball fans in the in the audience. But I wonder, am I cra am I who's crazy here? Yeah. Um, but there's it's no wonder I don't like sports because, you know. When when you go to sports games, you don't expect everyone to be booing your whole family. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <sighs> I need a lot of therapy. I need a lot of therapy. <laughs> you know? My dad was the guy at the sports games who shout... You know, there's always one guy who's, like, shouting at the field. Like, he actually wants to be heard by the players. Mm. That's my dad. Be like within earshot? Like you guys are sitting close enough that... No, we are good. far away. <laughs> That's why he's shouting so loud. Fuck. Oh, uh, your dad's a legend. It's obviously it's different when it's your dad, but from a third party. Well, I, I'm afraid it would probably look... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he got he managed to get booed by a bunch of strangers, so I don't know if it's worse. Yeah. Such a fucking grouch, dude. My mom had a great comment. Wait, let me pull this up. Because my mom's been living with, with this shit longer than I have, right? Right, right, right? I mean, she she suffered by his by his insanity more than anyone. She goes, Babe, being at the ballpark is an experience. People watching, eating hot dogs and peanuts, singing, take me out to the ball game. And yes, sometimes beach balls are tossed around and people participate in the wave. You could be a little grumpy sometimes. <laughs> My mom's been holding that in for decades. <laughs> and she was still so nice about it. Yes, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, she's right. I mean... I'm laughing, but yeah. Then my dad, dad says, chill out a little bit. My dad says, ah, yes, I'm sitting with my hot dog and fries in my lap, enjoying the game. Then some asshole spikes a volleyball at your nuts. And there goes your food all over your neighbor. I'm like, dude, when have you ever seen that happen? Spiking a volleyball at your nuts. I mean, that's, that's not Nobody real. spikes the volleyball. And it's, and it's not, and it's a beach ball. It's like inflatable. Oh, look at this. Pregnancy update got demonetized. Can somebody explain how the fuck that's possible? No. On the Highlights channel. I was just in my email. Got it. Anyway, uh, I'm starting to lose my throat. Let, my throat. Mm, my voice. I've got a lot I want to get to here, but let's talk about Bell. And then let's wrap it up, because we're going to do another episode on Tuesday of next week. Or actually, so this Friday we've got Oliver Tree. Yes. Tuesday, we've got Chris D'Elia. Yes. Friday, we're going to do another Top of the Week. Right. And we've got a lot to discuss then. But first of all, Belle, listen to the call. We had asked her to fart in a jar and send it to us. Now, this is, is this coincidental or is this a direct correlation, Dan and Ian? You tell me what you think. We said, Belle, fart in a jar and send it to me and add that as a Patreon incentive. And then like three or four days later, she starts, uh, canning her bath water <laughs> is what do you think about that yeah i mean it's hard to not think that it was related i mean <clears throat> specifically she's putting the bath water in mason jars which you like emphasize over and over again with the fart thing uh, I, I thank you dan i yeah. said put it in a mason jar yep like a fairy from zelda 
Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That'd be such a great item in a game. Yeah. Bella, Belle Delphine's farts. Right. Sniff. Sniff to gain For health revival. back. Revival, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it could have been a coincidence. It could have been a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences, Dan. All right. But anyway, she responded after seeing our clip. She sold out of her bath water, by the way, which is so good. Good for her. I don't know how you sell out of water, by the way. <laughs> yeah, very she thirsty said, fans. Hey, Ethan, saw your video. It was great. Wish I could come on the podcast. I'm sure it would have been funny. I do, however, have a, quote, package to send you. <laughs> you have an address, P.O. Box. And then, by the way, she said... Belle Dolphin. Was she taking it? Was I saying her name funny? Uh, no, it's probably just a typo, right? Belle Dolphin. The E and the O are pretty far away from each other. So, what do you think it is? Do you think she sent me the fart? I'm afraid she just sent me some bath water. I, I had that thought, and I gotta tell you, that's gonna be pretty disappointing if that's what it is. Maybe it's Belle. a, well, I'll tell you, maybe it's a bath water that she farted in the bath. Oh, like a little bubbler? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a little I'd infusion. settle for that. It's like a LaCroix. I like want to be able little... to drink her fart. Smelling it's not enough. <laughs> um, it's but, wild how much attention this got, though. Yeah, Talk it's been that. it's been unbelievable. I mean, it's great. I continue to like I continue to like her. I don't know what's all the hubbub. I think she's great. Um, nineteen-year-old Instagram model sells her own bath water for thirty dollars a jar. Now, I'll tell you, I think thirty dollars is a bargain price. To be honest with you, I would pay. I would pay more for it. How much was diamond water? Uh, diamond water? it was. It was less than that. This, but come on, this is bath water, baby. Let's see. An Instagram model with almost four million followers on her account began allowing fans to purchase her bath water for thirty dollars a bottle, selling out in three days. Um, I am now selling my bath water for all you thirsty gamer boys. Check out my new shop where I'm selling stuff for you. I wonder if that's even legal to sell your, like, bath water. Because I mean, it's almost like a bodily fluid. You're shipping water. <laughs> you know? You slap a biohazard sticker on that package. But there's a video. Hey, let me see. Do I have that video of her promoting it? Yeah, here it is. It's kind of not safe for work, so I yeah, won't show it, but okay, right. you can hear her voice. Up, Here, I, can, I can show the beginning, but then she starts, like, squirting water on her ass and drooling in it and shit. But. but gamer girl, bathwater. Yeah, fuck yeah, dog. Yeah, okay, this is when I have to cut it off. Yeah. Um, by the way, you know she's just running tap water into those, right? How dare you? You're saying she doesn't have integrity? She said, my bath water sold out. I'll be making some more soon, but it's honestly a weird couple of days taking so many baths. I mean, come on. <laughs> you can't run out of water. You just... <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean? Maybe, you know, she cares about her audience. I feel like this was my idea. <laughs> I really do. and And I think it's fantastic that she appropriated it in a way that that makes sense for her yeah i think it's a great idea the bath water was was a fantastic idea the fart was a little the fart is just it's just air so ultimately when you're getting water you know it's like hey you know there's probably some poop particles <laughs> floating around in this if she really did uh bathe, bathe in it, in it right? which i doubt to be honest with you well <laughs> guess we'll find out soon maybe I wonder well, if we we'll could, you know, I wonder Either if we could. Either way, we win, really. Yeah. I wonder if we can, like, send it to a laboratory and see if there's any DNA in it or something. <laughs> and send it to, to, uh, Ancestry.com or something. Oh, that'd be so epic, dude. We can clone her. <laughs> um, here's a bunch of headlines. Diamond Water is 36 bucks for a 12-pack, by the way, so she's definitely charging a premium. Yeah, that. there's a premium there. Look, Metro's got a headline. Polygon's got a headline. Newsweek's got a headline. She's crushing it, man. She's getting so much publicity. Yep. God bless her, man. Irish Post. Yahoo. Wait, is it $43 bathwater or $30 bath? Is it 30 pounds? Because it says $43 here. 
Oh, she is British, so it probably is 30 pounds. Wow. Okay, so that's a good price. Right. Yeah. 43 bucks. Oh, yeah, so there's, like, some goof, obviously goof headlines that, that were uh, people were really falling for. One person sent to hospital after drinking Internet Personalities bath water. 27 people have reportedly gotten herpes after drinking Instagram Bella Thorne or Bella Delphine's bath water. Someone showed me, I saw a picture online where she had a herpes on her lip. And someone was like, don't drink this bath water. Wait, really? Yeah. Uh, like, Look it up. I oh, swear to God, it's a picture of her with braces and she's got like a herpes oh, no. healing on her lip. Oh, no. Uh, would you guys fuck, would you rather fuck Bella Delphine or Bella Thorne? Uh, for me, Bella Thorne for sure. Like, Really? Every time. Yeah. Really? You, you're into that? Uh, over this? Oh, over the no, weird... No offense. Over no. this? Come on, what do you got? Zach was fucking basically jerking well, off no, us. No, it's Zach. Bella no. Delphine died? God, you t- Google's so weird. Anyway. What else I got? Maybe I should just finish it. Okay, let's 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 just let's. Oh, look at this! I, f- I found the pictures. I don't know if this could be. Show me. Pull it up, though. Here, I'll send you the link. So you guys, before you drink this water, make the make the distinction for yourself. You know, be aware. There you go. Just dropped it in. For so you. here we go. This. Yeah. So, it could be a cut, but it could also be a healing herp for sure. <laughs> you have it on different sides of the lip. Interestingly. Right? It's not flipped. I guess it could be a flipped image. Flipped, yeah. It does look like in the same location. Well, I just looked it up, and over half of Americans have oral herpes, so... What? Yeah. Half? It's, it's what it says. Is it just that some... I, I've read that some people just don't show it. I've never had an oral herpes. Yeah. But I guess it's possible I've I mean, to be it. honest, I, I, I get little, you know... I call them cold sores because that doesn't sound as bad as herpes, but I get those, I don't know, maybe once every couple years. It kind of breaks you out. Get I've a got them co- ever since I was out, a kid, though. You get it outside of your mouth. Like on the lip. Like like the one in the picture of her. You got herpes, dog. I guess so. I've literally had that happen since like elementary school, though. You know, that's, that's fu- I've se- I have friends that had that happen in, in uh, elementary school, too. Yeah. Probably from like kissing their mom or some shit. Sharing something with their family, yeah. But I guess some people just show it, and some other people don't. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, it, it only uh, breaks out every few years. Even what do you do when it happens? Like, how do you live your life? Ointment on. I mean, it doesn't. It's not very severe. Like, I when I say, I think there are different types. You know what I mean? And like the pictures that you see that are fucking nasty with like huge welts on people's lips. That's not what happens. It's like a little bump. It looks like what she's got. Yeah, or if if that even. Is yeah, it, it embarrassing about, it when you about, go outside? I mean, I guess, but over half the people around me have it too, so huh? <laughs> I don't have to and feel that I, bad. You know, about I was it. reading like if you so if you have an oral herpes, if you like go down on a chick, you can give her genital herpes. That is true. That's when there's fucked. a breakout. So I I have been conscious of that in the past. And it's not. Is it? It's not. Uh, it's not infectious when you don't have it on your lip, right? No. Fuck. It's only when it's breaking out or whatever. But yeah. I can't believe you can like lick someone's asshole and give them anal herpes. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. No experience with that one, but but yes, I guess theoretically. Man. Yeah. Well, apparently like everybody has HPV. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like kind of like, you can be embarrassed about it, but you know what? It's, like I said, it, it's so common at this point that it's like, whatever. There's mm-hmm. three of us in this office right now. One of us was bound to have it, so there you go. Ian? I'm the winner. Maybe Ian, too? Well, statistically, you got Ian. Ian should have it as well. Tell us about your herpes, Ian. I'm all clean. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I, I'm trying to date here. You heard, ladies. <laughs> yeah. Well, either way, I don't recommend drinking the, the bath water. I'll sniff it though. I'm really curious what she's sending me. I can't wait to get I it. I hope it's the fart. That's way funnier. If it's oh, the water, God. what the fuck do we do? It's just a fucking jar of water. Well, I'll have Zach drink it. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> okay, fair we'll enough. do something with it for sure. Yeah. He's not here today, so he can't. He All right. Can't well, I, I'm I'm sl- I'm slogging through this. So let's go ahead and just finish up. What time is it? Because I have we have a doctor's appointment with Theodore at, but I've got I've got time. We'll be at an hour and a half in about five minutes. Okay. Or so. So there's a problem. O.J. Simpson's on Twitter, and everyone's goofing around. But like for example, here's a fan who took a picture with him. Oh shit. At the airport. Smiling and, and by the way, God bless, nice hoodie. <laughs> OJ kills it at Las Vegas airport. Dude says he was in first class. How the fuck is this guy hiding so much money from? That's a really good. The question. victims of this murder. Every time he's playing golf, and the fact that he's flying first class is strange to me because this guy owes millions of dollars to the family of the people he murdered. Right. Yes, he does. Bro. Yeah. No, I've wondered that since he started his Twitter, every video he's playing golf. How the fuck is he affording that? I don't get it. But I, I do wonder if pe- all the comments on this were like, hey, let's stop glorifying OJ because he's an actual murderer. And I and I think that's true because a, a lot of people here are like, oh, memeing on him like OJ's a murderer. But we have to remember that this guy is a literaler, literaler murderer. <laughs> He viciously killed two people with with a knife and cut their heads off, dude. Almost, almost cut her head off. Yeah. So somebody in that thread linked the picture of her. Oh yeah, I didn't click really, that. Which uh, really, yeah, kind of snapped me back. And I, you looked at kinda, the image. Yeah, I looked at it. Was it I, gruesome? Actually, it's extremely gruesome. Do not open it. I mean, it kind of—it's uh, like just, the police photo, and uh, yeah, I mean, when you see that, it kind of snapped me back to reality. Not that I like, you know. Was taking it too lightly, but when you see that, it's like, oh yeah, this guy actually fucking did that. It's fucking. I mean, crazy. it's like Charles Manson. You're just walking around, and be like, hey, it's Charles Manson, peace. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Juice, can I get a picture? <laughs> Say murder. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know how to react to this because he's on Twitter, making a fool of himself. The, I mean, the thing is, he, he, the the trolling is still relentless. On yeah, him. yeah, yeah. You yeah. go to any post of his, it's nothing but people calling him a murderer and shit, so I don't know how he's not sick of it. But here, he just posted this video today. That's what I'm talking about. On the go- I just, like, this guy's living his best life. He's flying first class, he's golfing every day. I, this guy should be in jail. He should be in jail. He should be at least poor. He lost a civil suit to the family that was murdered. He owes them. But here he is golfing, living his best life, smiling, laughing, flying first class. I mean, it's bizarre. That's what I'm talking about. Bro, hey, why are you acting like you're on a sitcom? It's like, what the fuck? Look how he starts this. Hey, Twitter world. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. Dude. <laughs> you murdered two people. You're no one's truly. <laughs> what so, is this? It's so absurd. It's just, you can't help but laugh. Let's see what the top comments are. I see you only have one glove. You killed it. Oh my god. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Look at this gif. Someone with a knife dancing. You have a wicked slice, Juice. Oh, wow. Picture of the victims. Yeah, I mean, again. And, you know, I, I was I mean, reading. good. Good that people are fucking doing this. These know, people yeah. do not have any more birthdays. Thank you. That's a great comment. Because, again, um... He's out here celebrating his birthday. You killed these two people, dude. <laughs> you know, homie here, who he murdered, wasn't even confirmed to be her lover. He was just at the house. Right, yeah. And they were divorced, too. They weren't even fucking still married, this it, this sick maniac. Hey, Twitter world, this is yours truly. You know, it's hard for me to believe that today I'm celebrating my 33rd Annual 39th birthday. <laughs> nice. I gotta tell you, it's been quite a ride. They said every life. It's been quite a ride. Got away with a double homicide. Served eight years for armed robbery. It's been quite a ride. But now I fly first class and I live my best life golfing. Yours truly. Some rain must fall. Well, I've had oh, some shredder. hurricanes descend in my life, but I thank the Lord because through it all, He's kept me 
relatively healthy and in good spirits and positive. And that's tough to do today with all the haters on the internet. And he always he's he's always complaining about the haters on the internet. I love it. <laughs> Which means he's seeing it. Oh yeah. Which well, of course. Ahead. His bio says, if you didn't see it here, I didn't say it, which which is a response to all the people goofing him on Twitter. Right, right, right. I mean, he's most famous for murdering people, so when somebody takes a picture with him, it's not for football. My name's O.J. Simpson. You may know me from murdering two people. I also play the football. Naked <laughs> he was in The Naked Gun. Yeah, you know he's got that. You may know me from Naked Gun and murdering two people. I'm O.J. Simpson. On cable TV, uh, spouting their negative opinions on just about everything. You know, I like what it, uh, Plato I, or was it Socrates? He said I love positive O.J. About opinions that they are not facts. He's such a guru, that such that a self help guru. Could be a possibility and maybe even a probability, mm. but the facts are they're not facts. I like the old saying that opinions are like armpits. Everybody got them, and most of the time they stink. You know, a lot of good things have happened in my 39 years. <laughs> the other day I was with OJ. My boy. This isn't. I gotta start making Twitter videos like this. <laughs> Dude is like. <laughs> I wonder if this is like his tenth take too. You know what I mean? Because he's got. It seemed very rehearsed. With yeah, it's like so rehearsed. Crazy opening. This guy just spends his whole day trying to perfect Twitter videos on the golf course. Boys uh, uh, watching um, uh, the internet at a sports bar and saw one TV and they had a softball game, playoffs of the girls uh, softball in C2A. And Alabama was playing Texas and I think the pitcher for Alabama was black and the leadoff uh, for Texas was black. And I said, now that's something to celebrate because when I was in school, <coughs> those schools wouldn't allow blacks to play any sport. Lately, I saw where Kaepernick... Yes, yes, I love positive OJ. How did this That's end before I just throw it off? I want to see how it ended. I if, love he, <laughs> if he drove off or something. You know, but also like, following is like there, all of the regulars. Hey, look, podcast. I got some guys to beat and some cake to eat. What'd you Take say? Care. Just on the left, also following, it's like you, Tom Segura. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yvonne, Eric. Well, you. how can you miss a single beat here? Yeah. I mean, Hey, Twitter world. I was acquitted of a murder I committed. <laughs> all right. Basically, in all of his videos, it's only him living his best life. Like, one is him eating sushi. He's always on the golf course. First flying first class. I'm very curious how he has the money. He shouldn't, but he does. I'll look into that. Take OJ down. I don't know. I don't like okay. it. This guy's a murderer, man. Yeah. So we got to make sure that even though we talk about him, you know, and we enjoy goofing on him because he is always acting like he's on a 90s sitcom, uh, he is a cold-blooded murderer. And that's the facts, Jack. Oh, man. There's a whole other... There's one other thing. Okay, let's get into it. What you got? Amazon. How Amazon gets to you, packages to you so quickly. It's like a dystopian future shit. Look at this. Have you ever wondered how Amazon... They put together this uh, video tour in Amazon Warehouse. I saw this on John Oliver. Amazing technology, amazing people. You know, Amazon's been in the news a lot lately for mistreating their employees or that the, the life in the warehouse is so difficult that people are like fainting and passing out and don't have time for bathroom breaks. So this video comes... Is this is... At a, at this a, is very, a PR thing that Amazon put together? This video, yes. Okay. So this this comes at a funny time when people are giving them shit for their conditions. And here they are trying to kind of, you know, fairy dust it. Have you ever wondered how Amazon gets your packages to you so quickly? We do it with two things. Amazing technology and amazing people. <laughs> Every day, thousands of items arrive, and Sean gets them into the fulfillment center. Tell us Sean. yourself, Sean. I receive products, and I'm a horrible dancer. Can we see some moves? Epic. Oh, this is so good. Man, I'm surprised they wow. have time to, to to do dancing and shit. He's got to keep his productivity quota up. Oh, yeah, he got fired for this. <laughs> They're like, all right, Sean, well, thank you. You're fired. You missed your quota. Pretty good, right? It's pretty something. It's pretty something. Here. 
and your orders are stored here. Lisa cruises the aisles to get your stuff. Oh, you make this look easy. Yeah, I go hiking in the mountains every weekend. Look out, bear! Oh, he's fake. Mm -hmm. What? This is... Whew. What are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing, man? These people make $15 an hour. It's like, just, you know... Do they make 15 Yeah, they raised the... Right, I know there was that big... They did. They raised the uh, the minimum wage for all warehouse workers to $15 an hour. Okay. I mean, you know, at least that, I guess. It still seems like the conditions there are fucking awful, but at least you're... I can't... I mean, it's a job. You go, you don't like it, you work there if you want, you don't if you don't, but... The whole thing about not letting people take bathroom breaks and the productivity quotas, like, basically... There's not many bathrooms in these huge warehouses, and they're on the far side of the building. And they have specific productivity quotas, so it's not that they're restricted from from going, being able to go to the bathroom, but if they have to walk, spend 15 minutes to go to the bathroom, they're going to get shit at the end of their shift for missing their productivity quotas. Yep, right. And I think they've been accused of, they, like, cycle employees. They'll, they'll fire you after a year. Uh before you can start to accrue benefits and that kind of stuff. Eesh, that's so rotten. Yeah. It's like Jeff Bezos, dude, you're the richest man that's ever lived. You are worth well over a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, that's the real kicker. Just it? stop. <laughs> yeah. What is this? Just fucking chill, dog. You know? Yeah. Just let the people go to the bathroom for Christ's sake. It's been a lot of people on Reddit who have done like you know, warehouse employees that have done uh, AMA kind of thing uh. and every time you see those you know they talk about how shitty it is but then there'll be other people in the comments and like i also work at the warehouse and you know the op is kind of full of shit it's really not that bad and i always wonder it's like is this amazon pr like it's you know, it sounds like conspiratorial one. but i'm sure that you know there's different experiences i think if you are a lot of the warehouses, too. Maybe some are worse than others, I guess. You know? Different managers are worse. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge warehouse. They probably employ thousands of people in different sections. So yeah, probably right. varies a lot. If you're out of shape, I saw, like, in this report, people are walking 15, 20 miles a day. Damn. So, you know, and not for the faint of heart. Yeah. But still to whitewash it as it's like Disneyland. I mean, either way you cut it, whether you think it's too harsh or not whatever the reality is it's a rough fucking grueling physical job and to whitewash it like they're at disneyland is pretty funny yeah i'm also a biker my friends call me little angie vroom vroom what's with the sets just go on a bike i don't get it we we care we care about our employees what's your hobby the <laughs> great you're fired in six months you're getting you're accruing too many benefits you could ride that bike on out of here to your next job. What's your favorite hobby? If it's not packing boxes, you're fired. Machine weighs, scans your box, and attaches a label all in like one second. Oh, and that's Ryan. He loves photography. I do love photography. Smile. Oh, I blinked. Bro, stop. I know what photography is. Cheesy as shit. It's just so stupid. Like, why are you trying to patronize these poor employees? Just let them fucking pack boxes. Yeah. My favorite uh, pastime is... is relaxing with my fleshlight. <laughs> Crash cut to... <laughs> Jeff fucking the shit out of his fleshlight. <laughs> Drinking Bella Delphine water. Hell yeah. Finally, Jackie gives every single box a long and loving hug before loading it onto a truck. No, I don't. Oh, maybe just this one? Okay. Aww, bitch, you bitch, you need to hug this pack. This is like sexual harassment in a way, isn't it? No, I don't hug the packages. Well, bitch, you're on camera, so you better hug that package if you want to keep your job. Love it. Every day. Oh, you love it. No, I don't love it. It's just a fucking job. That's a little strange, isn't it? All around the world, making her hug the package. Of of pack loving hug before it's loading it onto a truck. No, I don't. Oh, maybe just this one. Okay. Oh, you love it every day. Sick fucking weirdo. I mean, it's obviously damage control for all the bad press they've got about this shit. But oh, you love it. I think this helps. Like, like you that love it, so man. Patronizing. You love the package. 
Like it's got a little smile on it. So I'll great. tell you what, some of my packages people have been loving too much because I get them and they're trashed. <laughs> Hugging it a little too hard. Right. Day. All around the world, hundreds of thousands of packages are shipped from our fulfillment centers to your front door. And it's all They don't need PR. Look, it's already so convenient. I'm never going to stop using Amazon. Just make a video that says, yeah, you know what? Fuck all you guys complaining. Suck my dick. You're going to keep using it. You know, they upgraded Prime. Now it's like standard one-day shipping. It's like, what are you going to do about it, you whiny bitch? I'm worth $100 billion. Like, you're going to shop somewhere else? And he's right. It's way too convenient. You know? They could be giving these people, like, lobotomies to keep them working, and I'd still shop at, at Amazon. It's worth $160 billion, by the way. Oh, my God! Oh, well, it's about to be half of that. Why? Because he's getting divorced. <laughs> Man, Jeff Bezos is getting a divorce. Yeah. And his wife, just from the divorce settlement, is going to become the richest woman in the world. Yep. Or one of. Maybe the richest. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. It's pretty killer. <laughs> well, unfortunately for Jeff, he'll be worth, he'll be stuck with a measly $80 billion. You know, sometimes people get upset about that. They think it's unfair or whatever. But um, from it, when I was reading about it, I guess she actually was very involved in the rise of Amazon. So look, I'm not there. She was she was taking care of his f broke ass before he was worth anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if she's at home, I don't know what she does or or who she is, but if she's at home wiping the kid's ass and he's at home making Amazon from day one before he was worth a single penny, she gets half that shit. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, I just looked it up. Uh, he had so much money that even after the divorce, he's... Uh... Oh, look at that. Okay. So she didn't get half. This is actually breaking news two days ago. Yeah. Uh, she's only getting o only getting about $40 billion. That's a pretty good settlement. And uh, <laughs> even after he loses that, he'll still be the richest person in the world. Yeah, I was reading an article that there was like a couple of days when Amazon stock was doing re really well where he was making like a billion dollars a day. <laughs> Man. And here we have employees hugging boxes and waving at the camera. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. <laughs> because of our is. amazing associates. Yeah. So then, on top of that, to follow that up, here's a leaked video of Amazon's anti union <laughs> training video. Welcome. You can We're see they to toned down the, the production value a little bit. Dude, this video is creepy, weird, low production value. Oh, this is like an internal training yeah. video? Oh, these are it's leaked. amazing. Watch this shit. Yeah. Welcome. We're excited to have you at this training, specifically designed to give you the tools that you need for success when it comes to labor organizing. During this course, we'll cover several important topics, such as our position on unions, associate rights, oh, I was about to say. employee disengagement, and how to identify... <laughs> It's their anti-union yeah. propaganda that they hit everybody with yeah. as they come in the door. There you go. Look at this animation, though. How fucking dehumanizing, too. It's just like, if it wasn't dehumanizing enough to basically be a fucking... Hi! Welcome to Amazon. <laughs> Here's the reasons why we think that if you j join a union, you will be banned from life from working for any major corporation. Not just Amazon. <laughs> we know everybody. We here at Amazon have facial recognition, and if you join a union, well, we'll never forget your face. It's animated like those weird Mickey Mouse Russian cartoons where, like, Mickey pisses on Minnie. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like the weird, they remind you of that? Like the deep YouTube stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those weird auto-generated cartoons. <laughs> this, is, this reminds you of that. Yeah, it's about the same quality. They're all, like... We'll recognize your voice on Alexa. Alexa, call the police. Uh, not this time, because you joined a union. <laughs> they probably paid some freelance graphics artist, like, you know, 50 some bucks. Some Fiverr. Yeah, Fiverr. <laughs> Shit's so black. Get concerns. We are not anti-union, but sure. we are not neutral either. Uh -huh. We will boldly defend... So wait, we're not anti-union, but we're not neutral either. That oh, there's there's really only three stances. That means pro, pro <laughs> anti, or neutral. So we're not anti, we're not neutral. So you're pro union. Yeah, somehow I don't think our so. direct relationship with associates as best for the associate, the business, and our shareholders. 
We do not believe unions are in the best interest of our customers, our shareholders, or most importantly, our associates. Our business model is built upon speed, innovation, and customer obsession. Things customer obsession, bro. Fuck? Can you not say customer obsession? What do you even mean by that? that? What that means is they're listening to you on Alexa. Oh, I see. I like customer service. That's true. You have a good customer. Let's not let's not say, start saying obsession. That's weird. Yeah. And our obsession with customers, knowing everything about them, the sound of their voice, where they live, what time they go to bed. Obsession. We have new technology that can smell them through the speaker. Ethan, you're smelling a little Baba Ganoushi today. We're obsessed. <laughs> and unions will get in our way of that are generally not associated with unions when we lose sight of those critical focus areas we jeopardize everyone's job security we don't badmouth unions in general but we will speak openly with associates about unions including any specific concerns about particular unions involved in organizing and we share our preference for a direct working relationship frequently and boldly even when no organizing activity has occurred you will learn to we're going to hit you with this propaganda. <laughs> Does this really no work? No matter what. Warning signs most commonly associated with early union organizing. Oh my Damn, god. Damn, dude. Recognizing the warning signs of organizing. This is crazy. This is so dystopian. Plus <laughs> other warning signs that could indicate associate disengagement, vulnerability to organizing, or early organizing activity. While employees have the right to organize, we have a right and responsibility to share our position that a direct working relationship is better for the customer, the company, and the associate. In order to be able to do that effectively, it is critical that we recognize... It's kind of like a South Park board. sketch. Yeah, seriously. It's like almost satire. I mean, they legally can't say you'll get in trouble if you try and organize. Like They're a, trying... They're, they're, like they're, blink, like, they're like trying to say shit with their eyes blinking, you know? Yes. They're exactly. like, you will not be fired if you join a union. <laughs> right. They're Morse code in it. They're skirting the line as close as possible to not yeah. breaking the law. Yep. We are customer obsessed. And what that means is we know everything about you. Concerns promptly. If you see warning signs of potential organizing, notify your building HRM and GM site leader immediately. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey, dude, this is straight communism. Like, like snitching on your coworkers. Like, hey. You go to HR, so uh, I've got some intel that Jennifer may be organizing. Then you they get on the comms and shit, red lights come down, start flashing, <laughs> the sprinklers go on. Hey, Jennifer may be organizing. Well, that's why they're they're barreling headfirst to automating these warehouses completely, because then they don't have to worry about it. Right, really, robots don't like need unions. Thing. Exactly. Well, basically, when you see how these warehouses work, they're basically just robots. I mean... Um, yeah, they kind of left that out of the uh, video, didn't they? They really are just, like, automated human beings, and it's so obvious that... We just haven't invented a robot that can do what you do yet. As cheaply. Yeah. But you can tell by the way that they run it that... It, they're ready to just sub in the human beings for the robots any second. Yep. HRMs and GM site leaders should notify their assigned ER managers or ER principal immediately. Principal? The most obvious signs would include use of words associated with unions or union-led movements like living wage or steward. <laughs> <laughs> living wage! If anyone mentions living wage, report them! Grievance. Living wage. What the fuck? That's not a union word. That's someone who wants a living wage. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Oh, man. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, I knew that they did this, but hey, uh, uh, it's pretty wild, actually. Carol, I'm mean, hi, Carol. So, I just want to report that Kevin here was talking about wanting a living wage, so... <laughs> You may want to make him disappear. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we're on it. Ship his ass in a box and send him to the Atlantic. <laughs> One day, Amazon Express. Or other concerted activity, such as an associate purporting to speak on behalf of his or her co Living wage. Raising concerns. Union graffiti, union t-shirts, hats, jackets, or other clothing, union flyers, 
and union visitors in or near the parking lot. His voice got a lot less friendly. Some signs are less obvious right. than finding the actual union flyer, but they can still indicate associate disengagement, which is itself a warning sign for potential organizing. Examples include associates who normally aren't connected to each other suddenly hanging out together. Whoa! Suddenly stop speaking to each other. No fraternizing. You hear that? Yeah. Conversations with people that shouldn't be talking to each other. This shit's wild. This shit makes me want to stop using Amazon. Change in volume. I already felt that way a little bit, but seeing this is Holy fuck this shit. company. Holy shit. It's fucked up. Better when approached by management. Increased associate negativity, anger, or confrontation. Unusual complaints or change in passion or detail around complaints. Change in passion? Unusual it's a fucking warehouse. Policies, benefits, employee lists, or other company information. Or any other associate behavior that is out of character. For example, an associate who normally leaves promptly begins hanging out in the break room for an hour after work each day. In order to recognize Suspicious. Warnings, it is critical that you know what an associate's normal behavior looks like. Often it is the change in behavior that is the warning sign more than the actual Bro, behavior you're itself. talking like a zombie apocalypse. But do you know what I'm saying? Like it's your the way you're describing people potentially talking about unionizing is like a uh, infectious disease or something. You must know all of your colleagues behavior. That way you'll be best able to recognize. Yeah, like you said, I mean they spy on us with their Alexas and everything, I'm sure. It's like tenfold for people that work there. Man, that that shocked the hell out of me. Yeah, that's pretty wild, man. I had, I had never seen that before. That's pretty juicy, huh? Wonder if they like tried to track down whoever leaked it. You know? Oh yeah, he's in a he's in a he's in a one day in the middle of the Atlantic. <laughs> he got shipped off to Sweden. Yeah, he was fraternizing with his empl with his coworkers a little too much. All right, well that's it, that's guys. It. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. We will see you on Friday with Oliver Tree. Next week, Tuesday, we are here with Chris D'Elia. Remember to throw up a a, uh, a thread, Dan, I, I guess. Oh, I did. It's up. Or for Chris D'Elia? Oh, not for Chris. No. So should we do... Let's, let's we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw it up. We'll figure it out. Well, that's about it, guys. So we'll see you next week. Have a fantastic week ahead. We won't see you next week. We'll see you on oh, Friday. Oh, I mean, God, we'll see you on Friday. I'm so tired, though. I gotta, I'm going to eat this chick. I think I'm going to eat this KFC as oh. soon as the camera's off. <laughs> Turn it off. I'm hungry. All right. We'll see you. See you on Friday, everybody.